like you know it's, it was something around like 500 uh, 500 millions of dollars then from time to time we hear we hear about some hacks so the security is like a, it's like an issue over there so we thought about how can we solve the security problem how can we really solve it and the idea was to give the possibility to reverse the transactions that you know if someone will break into your account and steal your private key of your wallet that person can easily transfer your coins so we thought how can we do it to reverse it and the the idea of AL was just to take a just to have the such an approach that we will introduce 24 hours transactions normal transactions in bitcoin takes 10 minutes like you send coins and then there is a 10 minutes for the transaction to be confirmed and after it is confirmed that's it no it's impossible like yeah oh yeah it's like you know impossible you can say like this this is impossible to reverse it uh to reverse the transaction so uh so we decided to create 24 hours transaction with the special key like a very secret key which you which 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 have to be stored outside of the every computer you, you should just literally write it down on the paper put it into the vault and then dig it down into your you know garden or something like it it's like your most sacred key and that key mm -hmm. allows you to reverse the transaction so you know even if someone will break into your computer store your bitcoin vaults and then you will still have 24 hours to receive to retrieve that transaction and the same go for exchanges if the exchange has a wallet of bitcoin vaults keep that because usually uh, it's just maybe off topic but uh, usually what you see on the exchange like when you have trades these are not the real transactions this is only database of exchange usually database uh, exchanges keep their coins on one wallet all coins on one wallet or just two wallets or three wallets but just a small number and when you withdraw the money it goes from some one of those wallets and that wallet of the exchange will be additionally protected by that third key even if someone will hack the exchange and steal the bitcoins ethereum everything and bitcoin vaults the exchange will have 24 hours to get it back to you so this yeah. is like the answer for the security and like from our research it it's we understood that if we will give to people the the kind of certainty the mm. security that they can feel safe with the coins like you know i can keep the coins in my wallet or at the exchange wallet whatever and even if someone will steal it i can still retrieve it we believe that that can be powerful for regular people to encourage them to join that cryptocurrency so we mm. believe that it can bring even more people to cryptocurrency with uh, that additional feature and yes I, you, you're very right i mean i can tell you we we i have been in crypto since 2015 and it's one of the few people have they feel more secure with the bank because the bank is then doing the security whereas with Bitcoin, Point, they don't feel very secure because they're not in charge of the security and it's one of the things that you mentioned and i had personally a situation where i wanted to send about three dollars mm -hmm. to someone and i ended up sending three bitcoin and there was no way to reverse it <laughs> imagine if i had a solution like this. yeah yes <laughs> this is this is like uh, thank you hannah for that because this is like a next step which i wanted to which i wanted to touch like mistakes simply right mistakes you have a list on your wallets and you just send your coins uh to different wallet you know like you didn't want it to send for let's let's assume that you have like online shops and then you send it to some shop it can be a bit difficult and a bit tiring you know to revert the transaction of yeah. course if you have people in your wallet you know that maybe this is possible but you know life is different maybe you just did one deal with someone one transaction yes. You never know if that person will, you know, re, re, um, give back your coins. Uh, so this is, yeah, an, an I think like, yeah, if you will make a mistake, you always have that possibility to receive that, to, to give back that transaction. Yeah, That's so, so this is first thing. Second thing, because, you know, 24 hours transactions, this is good for safety. It's very good for safety. 
but crypto is meant to be fast as well. In Bitcoin, you have 10 minutes transactions. So we thought that if we will have only 24 hours transactions, mm, that might be difficult for traders. Traders might be not happy with it because to, to withdraw like coins from the exchange, it will take one day in trading. Oh my God, this is like, you know, eternal. It, this is like eternity in trading. You cannot, you cannot do something like it. So we thought, how can we make 10 minutes transactions secure? So we, so we thought about something like this, that in Bitcoin, in, in, in classical Bitcoin solution, you have in classical, classic Bitcoin, you have something which is called like multi-signature. So in normal wallet, you just have the one key, but there is an option to have like two keys that you need to sign with two keys. But um, in Bitcoin, it can, the signature of two keys can be done from one device, from your computer. You just can, you can have just two keys and that's it. And we thought like, okay, let's make, let's take it a step farther. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do something like it, that to do multi-signature, you need to have two devices. So for example, you have your phone and you have your laptop, like, you know, the computer, um, like right. a desktop computer. And right. um, to send 10 minutes transaction, first, for example, you need to put it in your mobile phone, you press send, and then you confirm on your laptop. So mm. that gives you another layer of security. If someone wants to hack you, that person needs to take over your phone and take right. over your desktop computer as well. Which yeah. is unlikely, yes. Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's more tricky. It's, more, it's, it's much more difficult. And, you know, so, so that gives you 10 minutes transaction. But behind that idea, um, behind that idea, there is another concept. Like, if you will think about the um, corporate business, mm -hmm. think about companies who, for example, produce miners, you know, pool owners, I don't know. Uh, some like credit cards, you know, backed with Bitcoin, like companies who do the business in crypto. Right. Very often, even here in Mindbest, we have that situation, you know, that if you, if you pay for miners, if we buy like a big batch of miners, like, you know, 2,000, 5,000 miners, mm. you pay a lot of money for it. It's like, you know, that can be even a few million dollars. Mm. And um, normally CEO is not doing those transactions. CEO cannot be involved in that. Shouldn't be. There should be like a chief treasury involved in that. And we thought right. that this solution can bring something like that. Imagine that I am a chief treasury, uh, like mm -hmm. a CFO of the company, and I, we have to pay for those miners. So I can set up a transfer in my wallet, confirm it, that will pop up at the our CEO phone wallet, and he can did the final confirmation. Wow. That, okay, I confirm, I know what is this. There is full description. My chief treasury officer told me that we are going to pay this day, but mm -hmm. I, as a CEO, has the full control of my funds. And this is, is the, amazing. so we, we treat it as kind of like a corporate solution that right. you have, you know, it's divided for two different devices and that mm -hmm. can be for the world of like, you know, big players on the market. Wow, this is so amazing. This is very exciting. It's a big, yes. it's, it's a big problem right now. It's, so, so it's a, one of the big, I mean, I would say this is a, a big problem that it's solving for people who want to use crypto. Exactly. And this is, we want to, we, we wanted to address two things like uh, regular users, give them safety and corporate users, you know, big businesses. Because if the big businesses will have the solution, they will be more eager uh, to use Bitcoin Vault. If mm. they have some, you know, dedicated solutions for them. So we wanted to address both markets with it. And uh, that's how it will work. So in Bitcoin Vault, we will have two types of addresses. So the first type of address will be with 24 hour transactions. And there will be second type of address with 10 minutes transactions with two devices. And guys, even if those two addresses might sound complicated right now, in the application, it will be very easy to use. It will be very, you know, intuitional that you will have the very straight um, 
a differentiation. This is 24 hours wallet. This is 10 minutes wallet. And if you are, if you are a hodler, if you just wanna like, uh, we've noticed that a lot of people in our community, in mining city community, are hodlers. In fact, people who just store Bitcoin vaults. So you just put it on 24 hours wallet, and that's it. You are safe. You just write down your third key, which is we call it recovery key. You just make sure not to have it on your computer, on your phone, not at all. That needs to be, you know, on paper. You just need to, you know, take a. You just need to take literally a piece of paper, write down your address over there, and then store it in some very secure place in your home. No computer, because computers can be hacked. Yeah. You don't want to have it on your computer. And in case your wallet will be hacked, then you just take that card, you just go to your wallet, type your recovery key to your wallet, and your funds are retrieved to another address different from that which was hacked. Different address. And you receive your funds back. All right. So that's the basic principle behind Bitcoin Vault. So, Wonderful. So this is why we choose Bitcoin Vault. Security, mm -hmm. which can address a lot of users which are not, which are not convinced right now uh, to Bitcoin. And then the corporate business solution, which is more secured as well and gives the possibility of fast transactions. Right. So this is why we believe that these are like a big issues in the market. And if we address them correctly, we have the chance to encourage a lot of people in crypto into our cryptocurrency. That makes sense. So, so that's why we do it. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. That's powerful. This is powerful. You know, a lot of people, um, I'm sure most of my friends here agree, used to ask us like, what exactly is BTCV solving? You know, even though we mentioned the three, now you explained it really well and uh, that's really awesome. So now the next thing I want to ask you is, where is, what is the roadmap for BTCV? Um, where is it going? What are some of the use cases that we should be expecting as we keep, you know, uh, growing the community and, mm -hmm. you know, increase adoption? What can we expect? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I see two questions over there. I, I, I can address them as well. Why is Bitcoin Vault not on Binance Exchange? And then we have, can I ask, is there a cold wallet such as Ledger Nano on Trezor? So I will address that as well. Um, yes. Okay, so the roadmap. First thing is, right now, at that moment, like today, we don't have that feature of the third key. That feature will be released at the end of July, beginning of August, like okay. in one month. That okay. will be introduced. So this is like, um, that will be our major step. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like we have the IT, IT team uh, like a blockchain developers team, uh, which is right now around 15 or 20 guys approximately, not my team, sorry, don't have exact numbers. Um, so, uh, and those guys are working like crazy to have it released. And this is, this is like milestone, like a huge step for us when we will have the feature finally introduced. And wow. then what we need to do, probably some of you heard that uh, we have the, like a gold wallet, yeah, our gold wallet. This is yes. like wallet for, uh, oh, once again, okay. So this is, this is wallet for Bitcoin Vault. Uh, some leaders are just testing it, uh, are just testing it right now. And this is in final testings right now. Yeah. So after we will release the third key, we need to work a bit on this to make mm -hmm. it work with the third key solution, with the, you know, the re transactions recovery solution. So we need to work on this. Mm -hmm. Then we need to provide um, API. API, it's like, a, it's, it's IT term from the IT developers term. APIs means that you have the connectivity between uh, cryptocurrency and, for example, exchanges, cryptocurrency and wallets, cryptocurrency and payment gateways. So whenever you want to list Bitcoin Vault or exchange or add it to a new wallet or add it 
to have to, for example, have your uh, your credit cards loaded. Like you know, the cards we the the, the Hanna was mentioned mentioned the cards like that, that we will have those cards you know which will which will work with Bitcoin Vault. But whenever you want to do integration of Bitcoin Vault with some another solution, you need to make kind of like you know like a plug like a connector between those two worlds. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, and th that's what IT guys call API. And I those see. APIs will be very important in upcoming months. We will be, okay. we will be working on something like we call it, um, uh, how they, what's the word in English? Sorry. Uh, let's say like a general API, which like we can take the API and we just go to whatever wallet providers, we give it to them. Next wallet mm -hmm. providers, we just give API, and this is easy to integrate for them, and they can introduce Bitcoin Vault in new wallets, new payment gateways, very fast, like quick with that. Mm -hmm. But why we were not doing it until now? Because after the third key will be released, if we will do it before, after the third key will be released, there is like a lot of changes. A lot mm -hmm. of changes and the guys will need like one more month to work on it so they will work a month before and they would have to work a month once again waste of time mm -hmm. waste of time waste of resources so mm -hmm. in, in it development there is kind of like a strategic planning what is that you know what are the stages of the software development i hope i don't go into right. too much complicated things uh, but i just no, want to I give you kind of like a background. Yeah, no, it's good actually, because everyone here is members. So even if we don't understand it, mm -hmm. you know, and understanding the fact that this is complex is also good enough for all of us. Okay, uh, okay, I so, hope yeah. that I'm clear. I, I just hope that if, okay, great, very informing. That's, thank you very much. Okay, so third key integration, API for the connectivity with the third key. And then after that, we will just go uh, a very, very uh, widely, very widely to the market. Then we will be, we want to introduce Bitcoin Vault into the uh, big number of wallets, like uh, popular, popular wallets. So uh, for example, like uh, we, we work with the Jet Crypto wallet. We've been asking like Exodus wallet, blockchain.com wallet. And here was the question about the ledger, ledger, ledger nano on tre or Trezor. So today you can use ledger nano and Trezor, but you have to use it with the Electrum Vault desktop application. The ledger wallet can be used with Electrum Vault application. Mm -hmm. There is a, such a possibility that you, when you are setting up Electrum Vault, you can, there is a possibility to choose hardware wallet and that can work with uh, Ledger and Trezor. And if I remember well, uh, our marketing de department is just about to release uh, the video and the instruction how to do it. I believe it should be released like in one week or maybe in two weeks. So, so that will be how you can do, do it with them uh, with the uh, ledger and treasure, but to have Bitcoin Vault in actual ledger applications, that takes approximately three months. We are in the middle of conversation with ledger, but we need that API. We need mm -hmm. that API, which I told you. Mm -hmm. And to really do that API, first we need to finish the third key. After we will finish mm -hmm. the third key, major improvement. Then we will do API and then we will go to Ledger and Trezor because they need to do that connectivity. Um, if you guys, if some, of, if some of you guys are a bit more IT literate, you can even go to the Ledger website and this is possible to find Ledger. Ledger just simply release the information. How can you integrate our coin with the, your coin with, uh, with their wallet? And they just give the what is what is necessary. Um, so yeah, so uh, so See. basically that's it. Um, another things which we are going to do, 
So integration with new wallets, we will start with that there will be a rapid increase in the number of wallets uh, in Q4 this year, like Q4 that, that we will have a rapid increase in the number of wallets when you can store Bitcoin vault, because then the API will be ready. Uh, we will, we, we are right now, we are just talking with the wallets, uh, which uh, wallets owners company, which like release the wallets. Uh, and then we will be ready to integrate from the IT perspective. So that's Amazing. that's like it. Second Amazing. Thing is the payment gateways. Uh, so, uh, for example, probably many of you guys are aware of the gate gateways like Coinbase, or you have Signal, or you maybe heard Bitpanda, popular in Germany from Austria, or uh, you know, uh, many others. Signal, yeah, Signal I've mentioned, Mercurio. Uh, these are simply the simply the the, the 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 you know the gateway. Like if you will if you will take your credit card, like r regular credit card, normal. You can go online and then you have special widget. You type your credit card number and you can buy Bitcoin uh, with it. So we we will be introducing that the possibility of buying Bitcoin vault with credit cards. And uh, right now we are in the middle of conversations as well. Still, one more time, we need that special API, that, that, that software to connect with those gateways. So the Q4 of this year will be like a rapid grow of the new use cases and new possibilities. So the payment gateway is next thing. Another thing is that we will be talking uh, kind of like a next step is um, because you have like two types of payment gateway. The, 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 um, that gateway, which I described right now, is just to, just to buy like with your credit card. But there is like another type of gateways. Gateways which um, serve the online shops, e-commerce, as they say. So if you will go, um, there are like a many, many online shops. This is very popular in gaming area, for example. Like, you, you, you know, guys, if you have those games, like online games that you buy some kind of a sword or you buy some kind of the car or whatever, like, you know, you buy some virtual thing in games, very often you can buy them with Bitcoins or with another cryptocurrency. So um, those companies work like this. They not exactly accept Bitcoin. They use a special type of providers, which is called like a crypto payment gateway. Uh, which do something like it, that customers pays Bitcoin for that virtual sword and the gateway takes that Bitcoin, convert it to fiat money, regular money, dollars, whatever, and pays that gaming company dollars, in fact. So they not exactly accept Bitcoin. They, 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 yeah, they accept Bitcoin, but they take dollars through the payment gateway, which is converting it to dollars. So, you know, to be accepted by those big e-commerce, we have to be inside of those gateways. Bitcoin Vault has to be accepted by those gateways. And this is like next steps for us as well, to be accepted by those gateways, because that will open market for us uh, that, that you can pay for with Bitcoin Vault uh, in a different like online stores, uh, different online services and things like this. So this is as well. This is as well next on our roadmap of development. Um, and um, okay, and maybe because I, I, I have that feeling that I talk a lot about it. Uh, so last mm -hmm. one thing, which is like very strategic thing. Um, in crypto world, in crypto business, uh, like um, many exchanges, uh, many company which, companies which, for example, provide like those cards which can be loaded with Bitcoin. Those companies works with so-called crypto custodians. There are companies which are called crypto custodian. One of the example of that company, which is very famous, is a company called BitGo. You can go to bitgo.com. This is company which helps Bitcoin and help to transfer that Bitcoin from the uh, Bitcoin to fiat money, for example. And custodian is a special type of company which can hold your, uh, hold your assets and um, even the company can insure your assets. 
and mm. we, we want we want to have Bitcoin Vault uh, to be accepted by do, those custodians. Yeah, so this is our next step to be accepted by uh, cryptocurrency custodians. This is like necessary step to take cryptocurrency to some higher level of uh, adoption. But there are like few things. If you go to BitGo, they will tell you, okay, what's your volume? What is the volume of your coin? And this is like, you know, like a one um, kind of like, a, how can I say, acceptance point, the volume. Uh, and there are a few others, like you need to give your code. So right now we are not ready. We need to finish the third key development to give the code, same story. Um, so yeah, so this is like Bitcoin Vault needs to be accepted by one of those custodians. Uh, there are many custodians like Segdex, Knabu, we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Go, uh, Bit, BitGo, uh, and um, we having like um, multiple conversation with different custodians. Because you know, it's business. Some of them are quite pricey, some not so pricey. You know, you need to choose your partner wisely, you know, negotiate with them, stuff like it. And that can take like a uh, few months, uh, such negotiations, to be honest. Like, uh, okay. it's, it's not an easy process. That's what I wanted to say. And to have those cards loaded with Bitcoin Vault, not only with Bitcoin, we need to have crypto custodian. So this is next step, and we work on it to 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 have it introduced as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So more or less, this is it, and I believe that I covered like what's what will happen until the end of the year and probably Q1 2020. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. I think just one uh, one of you questions. So basically, Bitcoin is I mean, in terms of uh, supply, it's the same as Bitcoin, correct? Um, and then we don't call it halving, we call it what? Reduction, right? Ah, and how okay. often does that happen? As if you could also touch on that, yeah. Uh, okay, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm switching my camera. So, I mean, on and off, so you can see that you're not alone. So you don't feel like you're talking to. <laughs> no worries, no problem. I'm fine. I'm fine with okay. it. Uh, okay, so we not exactly call it halving, we call it like um, mining reward reduction. Uh, I, 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 sorry, guys. I will be like a like a professor, like a school professor for a second. <laughs> so the, the halving, like, what does it mean? Halving? It means cut by half. Uh, so right now we are not cutting by half the mining reward. We we are just reducing the mining reward. Um, so I, I don't have all the data in my head, but I have the. Uh, there is my. Um, what's the word in English? Yeah, it's my worksheet which which helps me let's say so we just have the mining reduction reward uh in uh, january 5 2020 and then we will ah sorry it's obvious it, it was may first of may 2020 uh, and then we will have next in november first of november 2020 and uh, so like every six months, there will be like a reduction by 25 coins um, until we will catch up with Bitcoin. And we will catch up with Bitcoin in uh, 2027, in fact. 2000, yeah, we will catch up with Bitcoin in 2027 in May. And then, then will be like 625 uh, of coins. Uh, so this is like still seven years to catch up with Bitcoin. And the reason why we do it, we just wanted to, we just, we didn't want it to uh, like start as a Bitcoin, the same pace as a Bitcoin. We just wanted to catch up with Bitcoin because we believe that um, it will be good for the Bitcoin vault economy, like to have the same amount of coin, rele uh, coin released right now. Uh, yeah. So this is that that will be that 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 will be like a, like a better for the coin economy and the circulation. And if we will, like when the Bitcoin was starting, it was two thousand nine, and it was only like you know few freaks which knew something. You know there is the still famous case on the Satoshi, Satoshi Nakamoto coins. I don't know if you have heard about it, like the first million of Bitcoin, which was mined, 
by Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor, like, you know, the inventor, they say, you never know, it was one guy on the group of people, but, you know, let's say the guy, Satoshi Nakamoto, the first million was mined by himself. And that guy, he has never touched these coins. So there is one million of Bitcoins frozen right now. And nobody in the world knows whether that guy is still alive, whether that guy has access to those coins. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, there was a creepy situation to like month or two months ago that some of those 2009 coin, 2009 coins were moved. Someone moved part of those coins, like 50 coins. And the wor world get like, oh my God, whether that means that Satoshi Nakamoto is back. Because guys, imagine that Satoshi Nakamoto now moves the 1 million of Bitcoin and he wants to sell them. He will immediately like bring price of the Bitcoin down to the, you know, to some, some really, really low level. And that could be like the end of the Bitcoin. So there is kind of like that threat, you know, hanging over the Bitcoin, like whether the Satoshi Nakamoto will ever take those coins. And, you know, let's just jump to 2019. Right now, there is like in 2000, let's maybe, maybe just one second, 2009, 2010, 2011, not many people were introduced to crypto. Not many people were mining it. Not many people interested. It was like, you know, development. But now in 2009, a lot of people are interested. There is like huge interest around crypto. So we thought like it, that the level of releasing the coin to the market should be more rapid. There should be like a much more coins released to the market um, to be in the pace with demand. So there's much more interest right now. This, it's, it's easier to distribute coins among the many people. And so we can distribute more of those coins easily. And um, it's, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't create such a threat that you will have just one person like Satoshi Nakamoto owning like millions of, of Bitcoin. Um, so, that's, so that was like kind of like an intention uh, around it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we call it mining rewards and those mining rewards will go like step by step every six months until, uh, 2000, uh, until 2023, my 2023, it will be like by 25 coins. And then from 2023, there will be like four, four years break, sorry, four years break, like with Bitcoin, like with which will be like a real halving. Like All right, yeah. I see. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so much, so much information. I'm sure we've definitely benefited, gained more confidence about Bitcoin Vault and, uh, you know, looking at the future, the vision is always important for us. So now, uh, before we go on, we would like to see Mindbase offers before you start talking to us about Mindbase. So can we have a tour? How many of you would love to have a tour? How many of you would be interested to go to uh, Poland right now? On the chat message, let me know. Okay, Before guys, you yeah, do, I... I need to see, let me know. How many of you want to see, take a picture of my best office? <laughs> Good, go ahead and let us know. <laughs> yeah, and definitely. I'm happy to do it. Good. So let's start from the place where I am. So this is the, this is the room we call, we call it Matrix. Why we call it Matrix? Because if you turn off the lights, and you will just, sorry, where is that? Oh, not that. Okay, so that kind of like looks like a bit like a matrix. Yeah, <laughs> that's the reason why we are, sorry, call it matrix. So this is kind of like a matrix room over there. So this is one of our, our rooms. Guys, sorry, but we have the cleaning team right now because due to the coronavirus, due to the COVID, we have daily disinfections of the office right now. So sorry, there might be some vacuum cleaners uh, noise in the background. So this is like a, yeah another like a, another meeting room. I, I guys like uh, our CEO Eyal Avramovich just gave me that that he just gave me the permission to show his office. This is his temporary office right now. So you probably I don't know do you recognize the. As you maybe know, the AL is a huge fan of Avengers and the stuff like it. 
And this is here over there are all of his, you know, like uh, like a trophies, you know, stuff like it, like the mind best rewards for the best farms. You know, there's some book in Japanese uh, with the AL on the on the cover, some certificates, stuff like it. You know, so so yeah, so this is like a temporary. It, it's temporary. It's temporary because the real the real CEO office will be yeah, very fancy. You know, I must say it's. I, I've seen the project. It will be very nice. Um, but this is like yeah, when AL is 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 right now. Okay. So the Mindbest office is located in the very fancy localization. To be honest, oh, hello. <laughs> so we, I'm right now in the IT room and we have like a, one of our friends, like a, <laughs> one of our friends over there. So we are located in the very fancy location. We are just, our office is next to the Vistula River. We are over the Vistula River and I will show you something, something cool over there. This is, this is one of the best spots in Warsaw. As you can see, this is very fancy party area like it. You can see there's like a lot of people and just in front of us over there, uh, there is uh, one of the most expensive and fancy clubs in Poland, which is called The Dream. Uh, wow. and, and usually Friday night, as you can, it's, it's Thursday. Okay, sorry, Thursday night, but still they're like preparing to the party. Weather is not so good, but um, but yeah. So in my opinion, we have one of the best locations in Warsaw, in fact. And uh, I'm kind of like a corporate guy, and I've seen a lot of offices in Poland. And in my opinion, this is just uh, one of the best. So uh, there is like a, oh, this is like, um, uh, let's, let me show you, it's, it's here like you can see it clearly. This is kind of like, um, uh, like, you know, when the employee sits. Yeah, sorry for that noise, but we have like, I, it seemed like work in progress over there. Uh, so uh, yeah, the office is like still being prepared for us. Wow. Uh, so uh, as you can see over there, like it's mind best. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, sorry guys for that, but you know, it's uh, after, after work. Um, so it's like a mind best. Uh, here we have like a reception, like TV on entry, uh, which is playing, you know, our, our like some movies. Um, here is like, a, here you can see the, the desk over there. And um, still there is like, you know, the cable over there, the Mindbest logo is waiting. And now I, I'm, I'm going to show you something cool. Mm. What you can see over there is the National Stadium of Poland, National Football Stadium. And wow. next to it, you have the Poniatowski Bridge, uh, which is the, the bridge, the name of one of the Polish kings. And guys, we are located in one of the most fancy area with the, one of the coolest restaurants next to the river. So normally when it's not raining right now, here, that place is like crowded with people. You just cannot move over there. It's like, you know, party place of the Warsaw. Like people are, you know, like a lot of them dancing, you know, drinking, partying, stuff like that. So basically, and th those restaurants like are really cool. That's, this is why, <laughs> this is just uh, one of the reasons that I really like this office, you know. <laughs> Wow. Um, localization is like perfect. You you just have to come here. So the only place with the Mindbus logo right now is this. And uh, this is just our kind of like a waiting room over there. Uh, but as you can all see, uh, the, the like this is like work, work in progress. Because of the coronavirus, we just had, um, uh, we had, we had like huge delay with the office. You know, the works has to be stopped and uh, Right now, we are just, więc to jest nasza kuchnia. Sorry, sorry guys. This is our kitchen. So uh, we have we have like a kitchen over there. Uh, here is like uh, employees just sit over there, eat some food, drinks, you know, stuff like that. You can have a break here. Yeah, coffee machine, you know. Wow. <laughs> here is like, a, this is, oh, can I, can I get food? 
uh, this is like a you know media room. This is a uh, this is where, where, when the media media department is working, and uh, those this is like creative guys, you know, space and area. So uh, they are uh, working over there. So as you can see, the tripods, recordings, some mics, you know, stuff like stuff like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like lighting, you know, all that all that stuff. Even the even the iron when they when they record. Uh, um, when they record someone, you know, speaking, having a video or, or stuff like it. So, uh, yeah, so, so this is it. Uh, I can show you my room. So I'm lucky to have a, a private private cabinet. So I just sit alone over there. This is just my room. I still need to do something uh, in that room. Uh, it's it's cool that we have like uh, we can. It's it's cool that um, you know we can do whatever we want in that room. So I will probably get rid of those wardrobes and everything. I will have my posters, poster of me being like a toreador. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I brought it from Spain, you know, I really like it. And my, and the, my wife hates it and doesn't allow me to put it in our, in our flat. So I, I thought I will bring it to my work. And, uh, and this, is, <laughs> this, is just, uh, this is just me with my wife. I'm kind of like a family man, just to give you a uh, few words about me and um, and still there is the great view uh, which I which I which I which I personally enjoy a lot and I really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so this is this is kind of like um, this is my space and uh, let me just show you when you will come when you will come to uh, Warsaw Poland which I would like you I would like to invite you a lot like invite you to uh, to come Probably then we will have some speeches, things like it. And then what I can, let me just, I wanna show you something. We have very cool, oh, maybe I will go like this. We have a very cool, it's here. Let's, let's put it like this. It, it is our kind of like a conference room. So right now due to the coronavirus, we just took two, uh, we just took uh, two tables and the people can just sit it and just have some conversation and here we have like a very cool uh, like an LCD wall with the screens and this is like the panel you know mind the logo and normally it's the stage over there and it's wow it can give you a great presentation guys hello wow. everybody <laughs> for all the mind visitors you are just invited to come to Poland Warsaw Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I really could do that one day with in uh, like face to face with you. Yeah, would Amazing. be great. Amazing. Wow. Okay, so what else? Massive, massive. Yeah, this is like you go, you go around, you go around. So this is like second, uh, second, uh, second corridor like a second corridor over there mm. so you have it kind of like this crazy Ma like, this is a monster office crazy. yeah and, and we are just right now we are renting another floor wow yeah because the expansion expansion is like really huge you know it's so huge how, how many people work in this office currently yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, like uh Ah, so we've seen it, okay. <laughs> okay, guys, so let me go back to my Matrix room. <laughs> so once again, we are in Matrix room, or maybe no, I will show you another one. I Personally, I prefer another room, but when I was like sitting to that, to that meeting, uh, it, that room was, was taken, so this is the... They had some, some meeting over there and you know, the cookies left. So maybe I will have some cookies. Okay. Nice. So this is, personally, I like, I just will, I just can tell you that I'm kind of like a by, by a hobby. I love cinema and I used to record some movies and per personally, I like that shot with the lighting, you know, and uh, it's, I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So yeah. how many people work in this office? 
Like you must be tired walking all the way. It's it's long. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's like 70 meters long, maybe or uh, 100 meters long one way. So th there is like it's it's like this. It's kind of like a circle. You you walk around and you have those cabinets all around, and inside you have rooms, kitchens, uh, and things like the conference rooms, kitchens, stuff like it. And um, yeah. well, right now we have 100. Uh, 130 employees in MindBest, around 130. So, you know, when I came to company, because I started to work in company in January 2020, there was 70 something employees. So the number almost doubled from that time. During the coronavirus time, when many companies were closing, we hired around 40 people. Hmm. And right now, uh, we have almost 100 recruitments ahead. We are recruiting 100 people. So in that building, we, 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 we just taken third floor and the third floor is being prepared for the new employees as well. It's, 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 it's really crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like the expansion is so rapid. Um, um, unbelievable, unbelievable. This is massive. This is massive. I don't know how you guys are feeling. I mean, I almost felt like I was in Poland, you know, behind the screen. I'm like, wow, this is so unbelievable. Yeah. I hope that I'm good host. I, I hope that you enjoy it. You know, it's not easy. Just, just that there was no coffee, no, there is no tea. I'm a coffee person and they didn't invite me for any coffee. So, but it's fine. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. Oh, you Definitely, you are just feeling. invited to come. You really need to come to Poland, see that, like meet the team. It's uh, definitely. I know a German team actually came today. That's yes. what I wanted to say. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but if, I think they came to Greg. They, they came to meet Greg. Right. Uh, right. Exactly. And they were in the office um, in the morning. Right. But um, still, due to the due to coronavirus, you know, we have all those things like over our over in different places. So right now, the, like there is full. Uh, amount of employees is not allowed to work in the office uh, so usually we have in the office around 20 to 30 people those days I and see. just the people prefer to work uh, remote from home because you know the transportation you need to commute mm -hmm. you know buses trams and the covid thing and uh, our management we just don't want to we don't want to force people to risk infection. So we give them freedom to choose office or home office. I see, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So now that just when you on, like just where you are now, some people are asking like, where is the mining machines then? Where is the Bitcoin machine? <laughs> so some people are asking yeah. like, where is mine? So <laughs> tell us about where the mining facilities are located, how many mining facilities do we have currently, and what's the expansion plan of right. the mining facility? Okay, okay, yeah. So it's it's like this from the top of my head. It's like um, uh, Kazakhstan is our mine location. Uh, I believe you can see the pictures and you can see all the videos like online uh, on the, our social media channels. Uh, with the videos like 300, uh, 300 degree video on YouTube, things like it. So in Kazakhstan, there is like uh, around 100 uh, megawatts and uh, another 20 megawatts uh, farmed is in development over there. Uh, and this is all in uh, Ekibastus area, if I remember well, it's Ekibastus, I believe. Um, I'm not very good with Kazakhstan geography, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, and uh, another mining facilities are in China, and this is like Inner Mongolia. So in China, we have huge development right now. Um, and these are like two types of development. We have our mining farms in China, which, believe, uh, which belongs to, strictly to MineVest. But we have like a lot of hosting contracts over there. Um, so because we are like big player in the cryptocurrency uh, industry, mining industry, we are able to negotiate a really, really low fees. And we are kind of like diversi 
we do the diverse, diver, diversification. Sorry, difficult word in English. Diversification. So it means that we develop our farms, but as we have as well like a hosting contract. And there's like a lot of hosting contracts right, right now in China going on. And the total amount of the megawatts we own, this is something around 500 megawatts at the moment. I cannot give you, I don't have like a very, very, uh, let's say up to date number because this is uh, like daily from day to day, we are just uh, buying new miners, developing them, connecting them due to the rapid expansion of mining city. And as far as we talk about next farms, literally just right now, it was like Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we had a discussion with the Belarus government. Belarus is the country which is next to the next to Poland. It's um, it's behind our uh, eastern border, eastern. So it's like neighboring country. Uh, and one of my employees, uh, his name is Kasper, is right now in Belarus uh, negotiating uh, with the Belarusian government and. Um, with uh, let's say electricity company in our next contract and hopefully if those negotiations will go well we will have the next mining farm on belarus uh, is it really certain is it like 100 percent it's not 100 percent because this is like um, complicated deals so first of all we have to buy like a huge amount of power then you need to build an infrastructure Usually when you do like a mining contract for the mining facility, um, you are just buying some, some land, land, some place next to the power plant and you have high voltage over there. And those high voltage is like 110,000, 110,000 volts. So very high voltage. And then you need to build infrastructure which, br which will bring it down to the middle level voltage, which usually it's like 15 or 25,000 volts, middle level voltage. And from that, you need to be build another infrastructure to bring it down to 400 volts, a bit bigger than in your socket at your home to connect miners. And time to do that, and the price for it is pretty high. You know, it's kind of like, uh, that's what we are negotiating, the price to establish it. And we negotiated the terms of the contract. So how much we will just pay for the electricity. And usually you have price per kilowatt. So for uh, 100 watts. Um, so that's need to be all agreed. And then you have like, uh, whenever you establish some farm, like in some country, there is like taxes, uh, like uh, VAT tax, income tax, uh, what's, the, what's it called, corporate tax, for example, or your or, uh, import tax as well when you import the miners. Uh, you need to establish company, some entity over there. Like we have Mindbus Kazakhstan, we have Mindbus China. Uh, if we go for Belarus, we should have Mindbus Belarus probably. Um, so that takes time. That takes time. So Belarus is like, uh, yeah, it's it's next thing. Then we have, um, then we have, uh, okay. then we have another another location which we are working right now. And one of them is Norway. This is one location. Another location is uh, is Ukraine as well. It's uh, Ukraine. It's um, well, we will see. But th that's what we take into consideration. And we have like nice opportunity in Russia as well, next to the Baikal River. Um, I think the city is called Irkutsk or it's definitely next to the Baikal River and we had some opportunities in Canada and United States but we are not very keen to United States. Uh, United States is like a um, difficult country uh, let's say um, due to the regulations, sex, security exchange uh, and we are not very eager to invest in United States. They um, it's, it's pretty difficult from the regula regulatory perspective. So the United States shouldn't be, no, no, no. It's uh, 500 megawatts, not in China, just to make it clear, all. This is all with Kazakhstan, with Kazakhstan, this is all. 
so our next look next probable location is like Norway and the maybe uh, and maybe Belarus definitely uh, Norway and maybe Ukraine uh, and maybe Russia so that's the places where we are working uh, still we do some expansion in Kazakhstan expansion in China and uh, we had some opportunity in um, Botswana as well uh, in fact one, one of the mining city leader connected to us uh, with some government in Botswana it's, it's like still in progress it's like a very uh, it's beginning stage uh, so that's that's just uh, I think I can share it it's uh, I don't think it's so much confidential and there is like, um, we work with Algeria as well, but um, Algeria, yeah, we will see, but we, we work with that. So those are kind of like uh, our plans. And so um, in, uh, because as Hannah mentioned at the beginning, I'm vice president of business development. So one of my teams is called blockchain ecosystem and the manager of the team, his name is Adam. And Adam is, is he's like in charge of all of those projects. Uh, and those guys just take care about the uh, purchase of miners, like they choose miners, they calculate which miners are kind of like a best price, uh, and they and they um, conduct negotiations as far as the development is uh, concerned. Hannah, we can't hear you. You are muted. okay. Ad Ad Adam was here. Some some of our members have met Adam when he was here for last uh, cryptocurrency event, Bitcoin event. Ah, yeah, Africa. South Africa, exactly. You know Adam, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great. So, so, so maybe you could also tell us more about your division and uh, who does what under under your structure. Because I remember we had a meeting last time, and you um, established some relationship with the community, and um, you briefed us some information. So, just tell us your role exactly um, in MindBased. Actually, we forgot to ask you who you were before joining MindBased. I mean, where did okay. you work, um, and how are you finding it personally working in this company? Um, how did you find it yes. different to working with other company? So, we'd love okay. to know you more also. Okay, so. Uh, Previously, my uh, like a previous company just before MindBest, I was working for um, a financial institute. So uh, it's kind of like a financial body called SIMA. And SIMA is very popular in South Africa, in fact. So maybe you are uh, familiar with SIMA. SIMA stands for Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. Uh, so yeah, okay, I see some replies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had a huge uh, community of members in, in South Africa, in, in CIMA, uh, from CIMA, in fact. So I was responsible in CIMA for the business development activities in the CEE region, so Central Eastern Europe. Uh, and um, yeah, so basically that's what I've, what I've done in CIMA. So CIMA has the qualification. It's a professional qualification for uh, finance professionals. Usually those guys are the C CFOs uh, from the huge multinational companies. So I worked a lot with the top CFO, CFOs of the biggest companies in Poland and the CE. Um, and I was responsible for development of it. And uh, when I joined the CIMA, in fact, there was a moment when CIMA connected. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when CIMA connected with AICPA and the AICPA stands for American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So AICPA is like the biggest financial body in the United States. So CIMA and AICPA became one organization. And in fact, I worked like for both of those organizations. So I used to work a lot with the Americans, uh, like US guys as well. And in, in, that was the, in 2018, uh, it was like the, when I really got interest, when I really got interested into blockchain and crypto, like, Previously, like 2016, 17, I was just a bit like reading something. Okay, I, I know something about it. But 2018, I was like strongly involved into that because uh, there is a big project on uh, having like uh, financial books, like a bookkeeping activities on blockchain. When uh, maybe I won't go into details, but generally it's like you keep the books on blockchain and it gives you like... Uh, register of the financial transaction which cannot be yeah which cannot be uh you know um modified 
and that gives a lot of credibility. And I believe this is like a future in finance, uh, future of finance, to be honest. So um, in SEMA, for example, uh, I was doing like organizing some nice events. Uh, so I was in partnership with the Warsaw Stock Exchange, uh, which is the only one and the biggest the, the exchange in Warsaw in Poland. And I was cooperating with the organization called Wall Street Blockchain Alliance. Uh, so inviting their CEO to, to, to Poland to come to Warsaw Stock Exchange with some events um, and uh, cooperated a lot of with the CFOs of, uh, from the shared service uh, areas, shared service companies. So that was it. Previously, before that, I worked for the, uh, I worked for the company, which is like a middle-sized company called Envibra, Envibra. And then I was responsible for, uh, uh, well, my official, uh, my official position was like the, um, what was the, what was the name? Uh, like, uh, oh my God, I forgot. Like I was the manager of the um, division of the product, like a video products, let's say, uh, like a video products. What, what, what my company was doing, what my team was doing we were just selling a very specialized um, measurement systems based on the cameras. And usually it was like a high speed video cameras. So that type of cameras, which can record flying bullet, like, you know, when you have a uh, 100,000 frames per second and you can record the bullet, which is flying. And uh, we even had a camera which can record like 1 billion frames per second. Literally, you could record the light, you know, or how the light is spreading. So it was like very expensive, uh, very expensive devices. And I was responsible for um, delivering uh, like a huge projects. For example, in the automotive industry, when you had a crash test facilities, when you just crash the car, you have a lot of high speed video cameras, lighting, like special, special catapult to speed the car. Um, so that was like a big technical project. So uh, by the education, I'm the electrical engineer. I used to work as an IT guy as well. I used to work for the antivirus company I was programming. And even mm -hmm. in my, let's say, teenager years, I was a hacker. I was like hacking, you know, I was young and crazy. So I had a different, <laughs> like, uh, let's say, experience. So I'm a very technical guy and the blockchain, I just got it like instantly and cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And it just got my interest. So um, it's kind of natural for me to move in that technological uh, areas. So that's kind of like my background. Beautiful. So now that takes me exactly to ask one of the questions that a member asked here. Mm -hmm. Now that you mentioned you are hackers, somebody asked a question saying that how are we protected from mining city? Uh, programmers um, stealing from our accounts or doing something unethical. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. So maybe you can address that. So maybe <laughs> asking, how are we safe from internal attack uh, into our fence and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Uh, okay. Maybe for that, I should I should like invite our uh, chief security officer, uh, Michael. Uh, Michał in Poland. <laughs> Michał would be better person to 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 respond to that. Um, okay, I, I have some information, but may uh, like let's say that I'm not like uh, fully informed. So first of all, what you do in the IT and the security, you have like a differentiate differentiation of a teams. So there is a team of developers who develop the code, and there is like another team in IT which they call them. Uh, they call it hard IT, like hardware IT. So these are the guys who are like responsible for the networks, for the security matters, etc. And when we talk about the developers, there are as well some some kind some type of divisions. So in IT, they call it that. Uh, the 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 one area is called like production, production, and the second area. I don't know how it is called, but I can explain it. So here you have guys which just do the code, but they kind of like do it offline. They program it offline. And then you have just a separate team, which is kind of like imp implementing that code to be live. And there is like different managers and the divisions, and there are separate IT systems with the separate protections. So like one guys are not exactly that doesn't have like a full 
full power on one, what the others are doing. So this is kind of like a separated. One are writing the code, another are implementing and check it, checking. So this is one, one, of, one of the security measures. Uh, then basically, if you, if you talk about mining city security uh, and uh, found security, it, it comes due to the wallets. So there is like, um, I'm not exactly fully aware how, the, how is the security protection of withdrawal covered, but as I know, we are storing our, uh, the, the mine, let's, no, different words. Mining city coins are stored on cold wallet. And definitely there is like a CEO who, who has like keep the full power. And as far as I know, they have some type of the, um, two or three layers of confirming it that um, sorry, but I, I'm not exactly IT guy, but That's what right. I know is, is, is just that you have I some. Think all we want to know is, are we safe? <laughs> Maybe that will just cover. You might not be the yeah, one that. We yeah. are safe. There is like a, let's say security strategy. There are some layers as far as I know that, that, okay. There is like customer support team, which has some um, power to accept some level of withdrawal. I think I'm not pretty sure, right, but it's yes. not that, you know, there is like a daily level of withdrawal they can accept and then it goes to some special procedure and, and things like it, you know, and uh, correct. But sorry, I, I um, that's not my expertise area. I, it's um, <laughs> sorry. Right. What sure I can, can tell you one more thing, which I can tell you that um, we are going to the, the direction for mining city as well is to work with the crypto custodian as well that to have the external third party companies, which will be uh, like have them, uh, which will be responsible for security of the funds. But this is like future. And um, this is the future, custodian is the future. Um, and probably, yeah, I, I believe that we will have many opportunities to talk about it because the introduction of custodian means that you might have some kind of like a longer time to withdraw funds. But this is the future. So probably we will have many, op many opportunities to talk about it. This is not right now, not right now. Mm, I see. Okay, great. So, wow, this is a lot of information. So thank you so much, Lucas. We're learning a lot and we're benefiting. Anybody that is learning? Are you guys learning? Are you benefiting from uh, this information? So we will close in the next five minutes. So just take us through the a typical day in at Mindbase office. Oh my God, it's like a lot of calls uh, those days. Like uh, we, use, uh, we use Google hang Hangouts and uh, wow, it's like, I, for example, my calendar is like booked of meetings. You know, I like, for me, it's like a lot of meetings. I have a lot of meetings uh, talking to people. Uh, then another thing is to, it's, it's usually managing a team. And for me, it's usually a taking a decision. Like many people comes to me, is it good direction? Um, can we proceed with that, uh, like a business case? Uh, my team very often works on some business document. Like for example, um, like there was a question I've just think I, I I've seen those five questions someone posted. I just I just managed to read the first one. Like when we when we have cards ready, uh, so I will use that case. Like for example, uh, to. We, we are negotiating the, the contract of the, of the cards, like uh, Visa cards loaded with Bitcoin. Um, so th those negotiations took us uh, right now three months, I would say. And at first we started like with one agreement, which has seven pages. Now the agreement has 10 pages and we, has, we have six appendix around two, three pages each. So that's how you develop the business. You want to make yourself secure. You need to divide, define IT, security, customer support, uh, delivery times, uh, payments, um, any special kind of like a situation. Uh, so for me, it's like reading agreements as well, confirming some agreements if we can go with them, uh, uh, confirming some kind of like a technical specifications as well, and uh, working on the strategy, uh, like um, like, my main responsibility is to kind of develop like a business development strategy. What direction of Bitcoin Vault will be taken? Uh, which wallets we want to choose? Like, you know, we need to choose like Exodus one were, were mentioned, I think. Like Exodus is very good, but you know, to go with Exodus, you need to be respected coin, volumes. 
that means volumes that means community that means you know um that means the social media activity at some level uh so you know it's like uh, you have many coins at the market to be accepted by some projects like very popular you need to have some fundamentals behind it uh, so you know we are thinking about strategy like exodus it's our direction but whether it be first wallet i don't think so sorry very popular so we will start probably with some smaller wallets but you know we need to choose wisely that wallet need to be secure we need to trust that wallet we need to check the company we need to do some kind of like a due diligence whether this is like good wallet or not um so many that type of decisions so i'm very often accepting some costs like lucas we want to we want to have the like uh, like um consultation with lawyers from like some country or something because it's like uh, for example like like a crypto company cards which we are working with is based in estonia so we are signing agreement on estonian law so you know we are in poland we don't know it we have to find the uh, lawyers from estonia you know guys check us that agreement based on the estonian law whether it's good or not you know so i have to accept those costs there's always some negotiations i'm not, i'm not doing them lawyers are doing we have separate legal team um but this is like my day for example that's how my day look and the day of my people uh it's kind of like similar uh, maybe more operational work they are preparing more documents they they are doing like uh uh, more uh, conversations with the customers with external companies third parties that's basically how it looks uh, and we are very digital awesome. company uh, just 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 one thing we use a lot of whatsapp we use a lot of telegram we use a lot of like uh, video calls like hangouts uh, usually um, mails of course as well uh, but like for example we have a, a lot of communication on the messengers it's very popular okay. All right, so beautiful. Uh, thank you so much again, Lucas, for taking your time to be with us tonight. Um, I'm sure more, many of you have learned a lot of things. So this is also live team members could not log in today. They can always watch it on Facebook. And also this is recorded, so it will be shared as always. Um, if you could like uh, express how you felt um, in terms of especially around Bitcoin and Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin Vault and mine based. Um, if you felt anything different to what you already were before, so please express your whatever you felt, whatever you gained out of out of this meeting would be interesting to know, especially it would be nice also to know for Lucas um, what a kind of impact you brought in for staying with us for the next for yeah, an hour and a half. Can I, if I, if I may add one thing, um, I've just, uh, I've just uh, remember in my head that there was the question about being listed on Binance, and I just noticed another question here uh, about being listed on big exchanges. So uh, uh, I believe that 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 is something which um, many people are wondering about: uh, big exchanges, Binance, stuff like it. When we will hit it, and and, and things like it. I, I think it's worth to address it because. Uh, um so guys this is not an accident that we are not listed on binance right now this is really not an accident and this is like a decision it's really it's it's like strategic decision um mm. so there are like two things uh first thing is like this that um being listed on binance means that everybody knows you that you become like famous all around the crypto industry and in fact, the same thing is with the coin market cap. I had the, those questions like why we are not listed on coin market cap. And once again, this is a strategic decision. And I would like to explain it to you. I believe that this is important, that you should understand it. Why is that? And this, this is not an accident. So Bitcoin Vault is right now in its uh, what is the word? Infancy. Like it, it's like it's like a small child right now, or it's it's even even no, it's it's like a pregnancy time. Like you know, when you have the pregnancy, the woman you know is pregnant for nine months, and the baby needs nine months to grow and you know to be uh, to be delivered. And the same is happening, in in fact, with Bitcoin Vault, like. That cryptocurrency needs time to grow volume, 
We need to grow volume. We need to have nice trading volumes right now. We need to grow price of that coin because usually, usually you, what is the very often scam, which is with the coins being listed on Binance. Um, like uh, Hannah and I'm, can I share my screen for a second? Yeah. Just to, yeah. you, you okay, may. I will, I will share my screen. I just would like to, I just would like to show you one thing. Uh, please just give me a second. I will just go to Binance and I will shame, share my screen with you. All right, give me a sec. I really believe that this is this is this is important that okay, this is Binance. Okay, uh, okay, here I have to move it. All right. So guys, maybe you have heard about something which is called like pump and pump and dump. There is very popular scam in cryptocurrency market, which is called pump and dump. And here I'm just taking like a very first coin, which name is ADA. Uh, I believe that this is Cardano coin. And look, if we will go for like a full picture of that coin, look what happened over there with that coin. Look over there. Like the coin started somewhere here. The price was like 001 something. Then it, we can just check how much it raised. Uh, what is the... Sorry, my problem with that, but oh, what's going on? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry guys. I have some problem with my touch, but I don't know why I can. Uh, give me a sec, please. Okay, here we have it. Okay, let's switch to the one week candle. All right. Hmm. Cannot, I cannot uh, draw the, because what I wanted to do, I wanted to draw you, show you the percentage, how much the coin grew, but we can calculate it quickly. So it was like 007 and then it went up to like nine was almost. So it grew kind of like a 10 times. So look what happened. One candle represents one week. So this is one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and you have the top. Four weeks, 10 times up, and then what happened? A dump, boom, in next few weeks. Then the coin tried to grow once again, and then just drop, you know, like very, very low, very, very low. And right now something is happening over there after look after what time after two years almost there was like a like here we have august and there was like nothing happening on that coin for uh almost like one year and th that's what you see here it's like it's like usually people call it like pump and dump and this is like a general scam which is happening with many cryptocurrencies usually you can just like choose almost just guys, you can you can do it by yourself. Just took whatever coin. I, I choose some poly coin, whatever it is. I even don't know. Look what happened over there. Like boom, 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 boom. And then it goes down like it. And this is like very often the fate of cryptocurrencies. If the cryptocurrency go too early on such a big exchange like Binance, then it is exposed to all of the big traders with the all with the huge amount of money uh, mm. The community called them whales. If you have 1,000 bitcoins, then you are called whale. And you, you have even something which is called like whale alert. When the wallet which holds like 1,000 bitcoin moves its coin, they call it like whale alert. Something is happening. Big player is moving a funds. And uh, if the coin doesn't have enough volume, a big volume, such person called whale can come and can manipulate the price. So if you will go too early to such a big exchange like Binance, if you will be revealed on coin market cap very early, in our case, that mm. can cause a huge interest. The people with huge money can join the market 
and they can simply pump the price and dump the price because this is cryptocurrency market. That's what is happening over there, guys. We need to be aware of it. And we choose the strategic decision, how we will grow the coin economy. First, we need to increase volumes slowly, step mm -hmm. by step. You start mm -hmm. not with the biggest exchanges. You Correct. start with the cool exchanges, secure exchanges, reputable, but not so big. You add those exchanges. In those times, you grow the coin economy, you raise the price, you raise the volume. And then when you are introduced to Binance, hopefully we will have something one, $100 million or, or $200 million daily volume. And then it is very difficult to manipulate the price because you need to have a lot of money to do such a manipulation, price manipulation. So that's why we, why, why we took such a decision. This is the reason to protect the coin, to give it a space, to give it a time to grow volume, to grow price, to make it stronger, simply saying. Because wow. with the cryptocurrency, you need to have the strategy. How do you grow the coin price? It's not accident. It's not accident, you know, that the, our price is growing so much. And, um, you know, there is, uh, uh so much companies over the market so much different coins i don't know i just choose else else is pretty popular so you know it has that few moments and then boom went down uh and um this is this is not so bad even for for a cryptocurrency but uh you can have like cryptocurrencies which uh, which can oh this is perfect example look boom beginning same story goes down and on the other hand, if you will go for the Coinil, uh, Coinil exchange, yeah. And if you will go, to BTCV, if you will go to one day candles, this one month, one day candle, okay. Look how, the, how does it look? This is like constant grow for a six months. This is constant grow, yeah? And this is because of the strategic decisions. So this is, this is not like a scam that quick and boom and down, no. It's not like it. It was the strategic decision not to release the coin too early to some, you know, the huge things like Binance because probably the, uh, the fate of our coin could be very similar. So we have that, there is like, um, we have a team which is uh, responsible for exchange listening, for exchange strategies. And we have a team which is responsible for trading strategies. And in fact, we have a traders uh, who are like constantly monitoring what's going on in our cryptocurrency, how the market is responding. Here is, for example, like a, uh, interesting situation for the very first time we've met something which is called resistance and there was like a resistance on that zero free level it's kind of like a psychological level whenever you have something like zero two zero three it's kind of like a psychological level so there was like a resistance over there but then it like went up it's it kind of give us that little thing over there for our traders says like this much more traders are joining cryptocurrency that's how mm. we read it um, so yeah, I just just wanted to give you a bit of like understanding what's going on over there, and just to kind of like uh, show you uh, that we think about many things, like correct, you know that like really we have people here who are like responsible for the strategic thinking, and it's correct. like whatever whatever it's mining farms, Bitcoin vaults, electric car, whatever, we think about it long term thinking, not for only today long-term thinking thinking for months and thinking for years so that's how we approach it that's how you do big business wonderful beautiful this is excellent really amazing are you guys are you guys feeling okay how are you feeling so start expressing how you're feeling how you you're benefiting compared to when you come into the meeting and now if you had improved anything in terms of your belief your trust your confidence 
and how you're feeling, obviously, in terms of knowledge also. Yeah. And um, yeah, for me, it's, 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 it's really is a great insight in so many ways. Uh, I'm sure the question of like, how is BTCV different to every other coin? It's very clear. You've already explained it. Um, looking at everything that you have talked, it's very easy to see. There is no scam coin that have planned everything this way and uh, organized in such a huge office and have so much corporate background, you know, like there was never been. So, I mean, I think for questions like, is this just one of those coin like a MLM coin? Um, it's going to be very straightforward for any of members to answer that question after you've given this kind of explanation background. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, guys, if you will have kind of like, uh, uh, if there will be like uh, more questions or stuff like it, we can organize those Zooms like from time to time. I don't know, like once per week or uh, however, you know, just um, we can expand it. We can expand that knowledge. So uh, education is really important in that market. Cryptocurrency it's kind of like a new thing. Uh, so we need to be educated on, on that. And please remember that this is kind of like a new industry and exchange, listening, trading it, the way the price behave. This is totally different from regular markets, like regular stock exchange. So there needs to be understanding behind it as well. Yeah, we will absolutely wanting, we would definitely be organizing another call uh, we will foc we'll discuss on what we're going to focus on the next one, but this has been really, really awesome. Uh, I'm sure all members are expressing everything, so you can check out what they are, um, how they're feeling, how much they benefit. We appreciate everything you do behind, Lucas. Because of what you do behind, it's not just a job for you, basically. It's uh, you literally with the job that you do, the difference between working for Mindbest and every other company is here because of the work you do. So many people are able to pay their mortgage, pay insurance, send their children to school, uh, literally live their dreams. You know, remember everything that they forgot that it wasn't possible. So your impact is not just as a corporate level. It's actually you are in every household where Mining City is because we do everything we do because of what you guys do for us. If you don't do your job, we will not be able to do this. And that means many lives wouldn't be changed. So on behalf of every member here, I know if they have a chance, they would probably say the same thing. We appreciate really what you do for us and continue to change, allowing us to change more lives um, every single day. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us. Guys, that brings a lot of kind of like humbleness to me. I, I, I like feel that there is like a huge responsibility over there and like, really we are we are aware of it that it's um and um like our approach is that we need to first take care about uh mining city uh yeah <laughs> sorry but i could speak about the strategy of cryptocurrency for hours but like because you are the our you are like a first bitcoin vault community and the right. our approach is like this the your business is first that's how we approach it and what I just wanted kind of like highlight that probably there will be a lot of attackers attacking Bitcoin vault that you don't, you do that or you do, do, you do this. But this usually because of that, that like you are our priority. We first think how to take care about your business because yeah. you are in fact developers of Bitcoin vault. You are the community. The price grow of the Bitcoin vault is because of you. It's, 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 we need to understand it. Like, um, mm, sorry, Hannah, but just maybe just feel like uh, one more, one more thing. We need to understand it, that the price grow, it's kind of like a co correlated with the mining city sales. Like, you know, guys, when you want to buy mining packages, you go to, you, you need to buy Bitcoin vol first to pay for the mining packages. And this is that kind of creates the price increase that increase volume. And then what we see right now is that the like uh, traders are joining as well. So that's how we will develop it. Like we will develop it together. Many people will join when the price will be uh, will be at the higher level and uh, the coins will flow even more after that. But we have like huge fundamentals because of you, because you are the community and you are in fact growing it. And you are kind of like that. Uh, how can I say it in English? You kind of stabilize that coin. And I've just noticed by the like side of my eyes that someone was saying that mining city is manipulating the price, how we can defend it. I will tell you how you can defend it. 
you need to think about the volume of the coin. Like if you will go, let me just let me just do it once again because I just feel that this is important to to give you that knowledge. Like look, for example, like you have that this is like volume amount. For example, here you have sixty thousand coins over there. So daily volume only on coinil is around several. It's several million dollars. It's like between fifteen and seven million of dollars. So it means that coins for seven million dollars per trader. So if you want to manipulate the price, you need to have seven million dollars to cause the increase of the price. And look over there, like like for example, I don't know. Even here, you have thirty-seven thousand coins. And the increase of that price is, you can see it like a change. It's, it's here. Here is that. Here is the value. It's 0 0.7. So you can simply calculate it. What was the price of the coin that this day? Multiply it by volume. And it means that you need so, mu so much money to move the price higher. So you know, if you will calculate all of those volumes, man, this is like, this is like hundreds of millions of dollars. Show me the idiot who will put hundred and hundreds of millions of dollars and show me the guy who only have it to only pump the price. You need to have natural, natural customers. You need to have natural customers. In other case, how you can do it. So that's basically the explanation, like the volume stands behind it. What is the volume? And uh, for someone who is experienced, you can go for the like even 60 minutes over there Oh, as we can see, we have some correction right now. What does it mean? Ah, okay, I don't want to go into that, but let's let's. Uh, it's it's just a trading strategy. You can really observe it. What's what's happening 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 over there? And for example, guys, this one, this what is happening over there? This is kind of like a natural market movement. Suddenly, from the uh, yesterday, 11 p.m we had sudden grow of the price yeah so that was like sudden grow of the price five percent and usually what happened you have people who want to take profit and they start to sell and this is like classical you you will find it in the books of trading the price goes down after that uh, so that shows like a natural movement of the market and because th this is like supported by mining city by your purchases of the packages this is growing as well. So the coin will be growing with Mining City as well. And I think that this is like very nice strategy for that. And then we will introduce the third key. We will implement the third key, make the Bitcoin vault very unique coin. Then we will implement a wallet, a payment gateways. We will just give the many use cases. And then we will hit like coin market cap. We will hit the Binance and people are like, oh my God, what is that coin? They will start to Google it and dig it. And, and oh man, this is that wallet, this wallet. You can buy it with credit card. Okay, there are some cards which you can, you can load it. Wow, this is quite mature coin. What is this? You know, so we want to have that effect. We don't want to, you know, promote it when the coin is, is, is like in the womb of the mother. Like it's not developed. So then we will like hit it hard to the market. Then, you know, this wallet, that wallet, payment gateway, many features. And wow, what's that coin? You know, how could we miss it? We want that effect to happen, to make people, you know, excited to join it. This is the strategy, in fact. This is the Beautiful. strategy. Beautiful. Wow. Amazing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I hope wow. we don't have any spice on that spice on that <laughs> on that Zoom because it's like kind of I'm sharing a lot of stuff over there. <laughs> but yeah, right. no, I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. I know that okay. you're fine. I'm okay. Just okay. Wow, that is awesome. So we probably have another call with you on understanding how to read the graphs and everything, but we'll talk to you about it and see what some of our members might be interested in technical and understand. I didn't want it to be too technical because we have mixed people, but we'll make it clear exactly what the training will be on the next one. So those who are interested in knowing those will only join. So okay. we'll discuss that with you. But I think for now, this is more than I could ask for, more than we could ask for all of us. We've learned a lot, we've gained a lot. So the, the feedback is overwhelming on the group. So you've made a huge, huge impact for us tonight on all I'm happy, yeah. really happy, guys. Thank you very much for that. It's uh, 
uh, for me, it was like, uh, you know, when I heard 2000 people, it's always you have a bit of like a stress it's, and responsibility that you are in front of 2000 people listening to you. Uh, it would have been actually much bigger. It was just because it was only announced yesterday afternoon. Uh, so literally people from yesterday afternoon until now only. So if we had given people a week, it could be 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 members attending. So our next webinar meeting will definitely be big. <laughs> it's just amazing. You know, it's just like uh, yeah, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say at a conclusion? And then otherwise we will let you go in, you know, take a rest, start your day again for tomorrow. <laughs> I think like a, like a final, I hope that I managed to explain you something and I just want to encourage you to educate about cryptocurrency. I want to encourage you to get some books on Bitcoin, to get some books on maybe uh, different cryptocurrencies, just to read it more, just to understand the ecosystem, just to understand how the, uh, it depends on what is your, your, your knowledge level, but to understand, you know, what's the explorer, what's the, what's the wallets, um, things like it. I just want to encourage you, you know, guys, I believe that each one of you, like literally, each one of you should read at least one book about Bitcoin. Like, you know, beg, like Bitcoin for beginners, let's say, you should really read it. I want mm -hmm. to strongly encourage you to read one book about Bitcoin. And after you would read that one about Bitcoin, please go to the next one a bit more advanced. Like education, <laughs> you really need it. Because cryptocurrency market is, it, is in its infancy. Like I will give you one example, just conclusion. One week ago, we have the, we have the television in Poland called TVN. And they did a program about um, Polish uh, crypto exchange. And they did such a big PR for crypto like like really bad like in poland every everybody thinks that you know that criminals are involved into bitcoin like my mother in law was like calling me lucas have you seen it do you work for some you know mafia or whatever you know it's 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 really i'm telling you but because i am educated i just take my mother in law and and i just explain her look this is like this like this like this they didn't show you that they didn't tell you this etc cetera, etc cetera. and i'm able just to reach to to the mind to the other per person by knowledge mm. by explaining so i want to strongly encourage you read at least one book about uh, bitcoin beginner right. bitcoin for beginners it will help you a lot and then if you can read a like maybe a bit more advanced bitcoin about like a cryptocurrencies ecosystem or something like it then please do it as well please do it as well that's just one my final thought and um and i was just reading those comments so i want to thank you very much uh for um for that many 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 warm words and uh, very encouraging words it's huge encouragement for me and um yeah definitely we have to repeat it like definitely thank you very much guys thank you awesome awesome fantastic thank you so much and thank you members also for uh, committing your time to be here and learn not everybody is willing to learn so you guys have made a decision to be here they spend the next two hours learning and uh, understanding everything which is great so learning is never going to stop it's going to build up it's going to build up and uh, like you said you know we are the community the stronger we are the stronger btcv is going to be if we're a strong community nothing actually can come and attack us um, I mean, the growth of Bitcoin vaults in the future is literally on our hands. If we are strong as a community, everything is going to be strong as a result. I mean, they are strong, solid company. I think the weakest link is going to come from us, from the community, because you guys are so prepared for everything. However, the weakest link is usually us, and we need to work a lot in making ourselves strong and arm ourselves. Then we can conquer the world, as uh, Mining C2 logo says, together. Grow. We grow. Thank you so much and really appreciate you. We love you so much and respect you so much. Have a great night. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Lucas. <laughs> All right, guys. I will. Um, 
So if there's anything, yeah. So before you go, guys, before you go, this coming Saturday, as you all know, so let me stop the recording. Uh, boom. And stop the live streaming. Stop, stop, stop. All right. And um, so, and live streaming, stop. I wanted to quickly tell you, 